Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Filippo Ghana, also known as Top Ghana, this Italian maestro himself has proven that he is the front runner of the current crop of Italian riders, coupled with Sonny Cobrelli and perhaps even the aging Vincenzo Nibali. Ghana, of course, already boasts the achievement of already being the first rider to win the world championships for Italy in terms of the time trial, not only once, but twice last year in Flanders in front of the home favorite Wout Van Aert. So, I thought in today's video we would take a closer look at Ghana's future ambitions and no, not the hour record, but rather an achievement that another world time trial champion dominated and that is of course winning Paro Bay. But before we begin, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel to help us out and check out our web shop if you want to support us that little bit more. Anyway, back to the video. Of course, winning a Paro Bay is not the easiest of achievements in pro cycling. The hell of the north, as it's also known, the hardest one day race on the calendar. And as a former rider said, Paro Bay is not about having good luck. It's about not having any bad luck. And of course, this is a really crucial component of the race. Last year, we saw Ghana's countryman Sonny Cabrelli take the win in his first year in a sprint in a very epic edition. But Filippo Ghana is, of course, a very different athlete from Cobrelli, which also makes Paro Bay very unique that these two riders can win the very same race. Ghana, of course, has demonstrated a multitude of times that he has got an incredible engine with his incredible time trialing record. But on the other hand, Ghana has also demonstrated how good he is at winning road races, particularly in the Giro d'Italia in 2020, when he took an epic stage by outpowering his fellow breakaway riders to take the win. And of course, he's also shown at the Etoile de Bessege that he has a phenomenal power where he broke away and in the last nine kilometers, he almost averaged 500 watts and simply incredible display on a bike. The other component as well here is that Philippe Ghana has actually won the under 23 edition of Paro Bay, which is of course not the same as the elite course, but definitely is an indicator of his prowess on the cobbles. However, winning the under 23 Paro Bay doesn't necessarily translate into winning Paro Bay in the elite ranks. And unfortunately, this is demonstrated by the past winners as the success rate hasn't been amazing. And we would have hoped in terms of riders that the under 23 winners would go on to become elite winners, but that is not the case. And unfortunately, Ghana does not boast an astonishing record when it comes to the elite Paro Bay race as he's only done it twice the last time in 2019 where he didn't in fact finish the race. Ghana is of course a more mature rider now in 2022 than he was back in, in 2019. He was also working for other riders. So potentially the change for him now is he's matured more. He has got more status within the team as well. So this could play a crucial factor. Coupled with this, Pyro Bay is also one of the few races Ineos Grandes have not tasted success at in terms of the win. Last year, it looked like the wait was over for Ineos with Gianni Moscon looking destined to take the win. But alas, the bad luck of Pyro Bay bit once again. So the team will be determined to get the win at Pyro Bay. And maybe they will look to another Italian for that chance in the form of Ghana. If that is the case and they choose to back Ghana, he will have the full support of a very strong team that includes the likes of Dylan Van Baal and Luke Rowe, who have plenty of experience at the race. Dylan Van Baal, who even managed to take a prestigious classic win last year at the Dwarf de Flandrin. But of course, Filippo Ghana still doesn't have that proven track record at Paro Bay and that can be a problem. The Swiss legend Fabian Cancellara to compare with didn't actually win his first edition of Paro Bay. It took four attempts so potentially with this more mature Filippo Ghana it can be a win for him. And yeah of course the similarities between Cancellara and Ghana are of course very close because of the world time trial championship titles that they both boast and the huge engine coupled with a track background as well. So Ghana, not focusing on the track this year, of course. Well, of course, is our record. So maybe the stars are aligning for Philippe Ghana as he's not going to be focusing on the track like he did last year for the Olympic. Well, he will be focusing on the hour record for sure at some point. But 
it doesn't look like he's going to be committing to a whole track schedule like the world championships the european championships etc so that could definitely benefit him his entire focus should therefore be on the road and perhaps it is laser focused towards paro bay as this is the big test before other targets such as the Giro d'Italia and Tour de France perhaps as well. But of course we can't just focus on Filippo Ghana, there are other components. We've already said he's got the engine, he could have the team and the bad luck of course we can't really think about that too much. So if we have a dedicated Ghana with the team and we know he has the engine, the other component to look at is of course his rivals. And to compare with Fabian Cancellara. Cancellara took it from a number of different ways. He won it in a sprint, he soloed to the finish, and this is perhaps the best way for Ghana to take it. As some of the rivals he will be against are phenomenal sprinters, you would say. And we have to look towards the likes of Wout Van Aert, Mathieu Van der Poel, and Sonny Combrelli, all of them having a better record at him in cobbled monuments. Kuberli of course winning last year, Mathieu van der Poel finishing third in his first ever edition and Wat van Aert being absolutely supreme most of the year so and he's also spe specified he's targeting this race so it really begs the question how will he outsmart these riders will it be using his team will it be that he's able to just distance them a bit and then go for a 40 kilometer attack that is the big question. But of course we know Macho Van Aert and Wat Van Aert are coming with fierce intent in particular Wat Van Aert. So you would say in a sprint both of these would be the favourites as they are, as mentioned, absolute monsters on the cobbles and have beaten pure sprinters in the past as well on a flat stage. But we did see that the cobblestones took the sprint out of Macho Van Aert. It still is the best way for Ghana to win this is by powering away and he would just have to time trial to the finish so a 40 kilometer attack would probably be the best and utilizing his teammates to set him up the likes of Luke Rowe and Dylan Monbal to keep away these Benelux demigods and of course Sonny Cabrelli last year's winner is another sprinting threat that is of course the question of this video it's a big one do I personally think that Philippe Ghana can win Paro Bay I would love to see it I think he has all the tools to do it to win the race with the huge engine the confidence the team's confidence but of course i can acknowledge his weaknesses as well that he's lacking experience at the race he hasn't got the best track record in the senior race and the strong level of competition that we would assume that would be there with the likes of the benelux demigods sonic cabrelli and other riders so you would say the best bet here would be a long ranged attack but would he be allowed to do that that is another question. Will it be this year? Hopefully. If not, it could be another year. But I definitely think Philippe Bugana will win Paro Bay at some point. And yes, you can come back and laugh at me if this all doesn't happen so basically that's it for the video make sure to let me know down below what you think of Ghana's potential of winning Paro Bay where he will finish this year leave a like if you've enjoyed the video subscribe to the channel to help support us and if you want to go that bit extra make sure to sign up to the supporters club as we've got a monthly new competition every month and this month the draw is the book by Andy McGruff and we're going to be adding in a mug and a t-shirt as well so look out for that so that's it for today's video thank you very much as ever for watching and of course have a nice day